Hey YouTube, this is James with Last Art Games. In our last video, we cleaned and restored this original Xbox. In this video, we're going to soft mod it. To get started, we're actually going to need a few things. The first and most obvious is an original Xbox. You're also going to need a game that can load the softmod save files. In this video, I'm going to be using Splinter Cell. Some other games that work are specific versions of Mech Assault, 007 Agent Under Fire, and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. I'm choosing Splinter Cell simply because it's the easiest game to use and it works with all versions. You're also going to need an Xbox to USB female adapter. I just got mine off of Amazon. You're also going to need an Xbox Original compatible USB 2.0 flash drive. This was the hardest thing for me to find in doing the soft mod. I found a seller on eBay that sells USB drives that are guaranteed to work. $7 for a 128 meg flash drive felt a little high, but to be honest I already wasted enough time and money trying to find a compatible one that it was worth it just to get the guarantee. And finally, you're going to need some blank DVD-Rs. Moving over to software requirements, you're going to need to download the Rocky 5 soft modding tool package. On their GitHub page, they have a link to a pre-built download that you can use. The link will take you to Google Drive where you can download the full package. This will take a while to zip and download. It's a relatively large file. You're also going to need an application called Explorer 360 Beta. This is going to allow you to access the flash drive that we're going to format a little later in the video. I found this version on archive.org that you can just straight download without having to watch a bunch of ads or other requirements. You're also going to need an FTP client. Personally, I use WinSCP. It's an open source application that just works without a lot of extra bloat. And finally, Explorer 360 Beta comes in a .7z file, so if you don't already have 7-zip, you'll need to install it to open the file. Once you have all the files downloaded and all the applications installed that you need, let's switch over to the Xbox. Using the Xbox to USB adapter, we're going to plug in our flash drive. With it plugged in, we'll select Memory, and you'll get this error message that's saying that the flash drive has been erased. This is actually a good message. It means that our flash drive is compatible with the original Xbox. The Xbox is going to format the drive into the FATX format. This is the Xbox and Xbox 360 proprietary drive format. To see that it's formatted successfully, we can actually access the drive now. Now that we have our drive formatted, let's switch back over to Windows. We're going to start by unzipping the soft mod package we downloaded. Inside this new folder, there's this Xbox soft modding tool zip file as well, and we're going to extract it into its own folder. This file contains the saves and the soft mod software that we need. These are all the hacked save files and the soft mod itself. I'm going to extract the save file for Splinter Cell since that's the game I have. If you have a different game, you're going to want to extract your version of the save file. We're also going to extract the soft mod software itself. Both have been placed in this UData folder, and these are our save folders that we're going to transfer over soon. After all that's been extracted, let's extract Explorer 360. From here, we can go ahead and open up the application. And now we'll plug up our newly formatted USB drive. You're going to get this error message asking you to format the drive. Click Cancel here. Otherwise, you're just going to have to reformat it again on the Xbox. To see the contents of your USB, in Explorer 360, you can select File, Open, Hard Drive, or Mem Card. If it works successfully, you're going to see this partition zero show up. 
Now we can go back to the save files we extracted and transfer them over to the USB drive. With everything transferred over, let's go ahead and close out Explorer 360 and safely eject our flash drive. Moving back over to the Xbox, let's check if we can see the save files on our flash drive. Here they are. Now let's copy them over to our hard drive. Once we have them copied over, let's unplug our flash drive and double check that the files we need are on the hard drive. And everything's there! Now we can back out and put in our copy of Splinter Cell. Once everything's loaded, we'll select Start Game, the Linux Profile, and then Checkpoints. And like that, we've begun soft modding. Let's confirm we want to do this by pressing A, and the process will start. You're going to get a few warning messages about backing up your EEPROM file. Please take the time to read these, and I'll actually show you how to back this up later in the video. Now that everything's done, the Xbox is going to restart, and we just need to take Splitter Cell out during this green flubber animation. Here's the animation, so I'm going to pop the disc out. It's going to go through a few more steps to get everything set up. And now we have a soft modded system. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my preferred skin. I'm just going to go to System, Skins, and select Default. You might be able to tell the edges of my screen are not lined up correctly. We can go ahead and fix that with screen calibration. I'm just going to go to System, Settings, and Screen Calibration. From here, I can just adjust everything until it lines up the way I want. Now I'm going to show you how to back up your EEPROM. I have the Xbox hooked up to my network via Ethernet cable. You can see in the bottom right the IP address for this Xbox, 192.168.0.140. Yours is going to be different, but this is just what mine is as an example. I'm going to need to remember this IP address so that we can FTP into the console to save our backed up EEPROM. Let's jump back over to Windows and load up WinSCP. I'm going to select FTP as my protocol, enter the IP address I got from the Xbox, and the username and password are both Xbox, all lowercase. Once we're connected, we can go to the E drive, backups, and then copy over our EEPROM folder. Now we have that safely backed up in case we ever experience a hard drive failure. The softbox package actually came with an extras disk that has a lot of additional content you can put on your Xbox. Let's burn this ISO file to one of our DVD-Rs. With a blank DVD in my burner, I'm going to go to the ISO file, right click, and select Burn Disk Image. This is going to use the Windows 10 built-in image burner. I'm going to make sure my drive is selected, and then check Verify Disk after burning. And then we'll click Burn. 
This process is going to take a while. With the image burned successfully, let's jump back over to our modded Xbox. I'm going to put in our extras disk and select launch disk. This disk has a lot of extra features. I'm going to install a version of my preferred dashboard that actually has the sound included. I'll select dashboards, MS dashboards, and then stock MS dash. And yes, I want to install the audio. And like that, I have my new dashboard installed. There's a good deal of extra content on this bonus disc. Here are some homebrew games that you can install and play on your Xbox. There's also additional applications that you can install as well. Now that we have a soft bond at Xbox, there's a whole slew of things we can do. I encourage you to just look around on the internet to see what all your options are. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing for more.